Today we're going to go over how to build a tower for a castle. First of all, you need to make a fringe along the bottom and you need to bend that fringe. Next, you're going to be folding the paper in half and then folding the edges in on so that the edges meet on the middle fold and none of the pieces overlap each other. Making a square tower, like what you would see for the keep of the castle. The reason why we fringe the bottom is so that we have a surface to put glue on when we put it together on a cardboard surface. It's going to actually stick. Now let's look at what sort of windows the keep of a castle has. They have very small windows, very high up. They also are wider at the bottom than they are at the top. Um, that means I need to make another layer of paper that's wider to go around the first and the keep gets narrower as it goes up. These small narrow windows help keep intruders out. I've taken a second paper and I've folded it into four strips which I'm going to now cut a glue on this strip and I'm going to attach this strip to that strip. Make sure they're straight Okay, lined up, and you can press them together. So this strip is now longer than the tower, okay? So that means I can make another layer to go around the bottom to make it wider at the bottom to help keep intruders Notice out. Notice in the diagram, the, uh, the walls here go up at an angle, but on mine, they go straight up. So I'm gonna have to make cuts here and overlap them so that they go in to meet this wall here. I'm going to do that right so now. So now, as you see, I have these slits that go about three quarters of the way down on each of these corners, and I'm going to overlap them and glue them in place so they meet this wall here. Before I glue the tower into a three-dimensional form, I need to cut the windows. I do that by pinching in the middle and making a cut, and then opening it and cutting the rest of the window shape out. And you need windows on all the sides, but you don't want them too low down and you don't want them too big because this tower is meant for protection. You don't want enemies to be able to climb up and get inside. If you're using masking tape, it needs to go on the inside of your tower so that it doesn't show. If it shows, then the artwork will look sloppy. Notice how I put the tape so it's hanging half off one edge and in the inside or the sticky side facing out so that it can stick to this side. So now I can nicely put it together. Right, here's, here's my tower put together. As you can see, the tape is on the inside so it doesn't show. Here you can see I overlapped where I cut the paper to make it smaller. Um, and I, you can see the folds here. So when I put this together, it's going to make the tower appear wider at the bottom and these fringes here um, on the tower are going to have glue on the bottom of them so they can be um, glued flat to this disc, this piece of cardboard, it could be any type of cardboard, an old cardboard box, um, to, um, to put the tower together. Here's the glue on the bottom. Here's the tower. I'm pressing the glue onto the bottom on the bottom onto the cardboard, flatten the form, keep it in place. Don't use tons and tons of glue because it'll just make a mess. Just enough to get it to stick. And then I will be putting this in place and gluing these two tabs. In. I've put glue on the tabs and now I'm going to put them in place, put them together. Here they are in place. There's the body of the tower. It's all now attached to this board. Now let's look here and see what we need on the top. And it appears that there's another wider piece at the top with these crenellations in it. And that would go around here. And I just so happen to have this piece of paper which I can cut into two strips and put the crenellations and then glue it around here. So that's fortunate, and I will be doing that. Cut right. these strips of paper. I've folded them in half and then 
the edges into the middle line. <clears throat> I've cut a slit on the middle line and <clears throat> I now have these pieces of tape sticky side out attached in strips to the inside of the tab. I'm overlapping these pieces and using glue. Now these overlap pieces have been glued together. Um, I'm going to put on here like this with the tape attaching them. So I put the first piece on. I need to measure and figure out how much of the second piece I need and I'm going to trim some off and tape that on. In order to attach the, um, the last side, I had to trim it. I had to put tape on the inside that was hanging off the edges. I had to fold and overlap it um, to create that angle going in. And after it was on, the top was very uneven, so I had to go around and trim it. So you can see the bottom is overlapped, and that's what gives it that nice angle in. The top is now relatively even. The bottom is angled in. And this is what I have so far. Now I've got to cut the crenellations on the top where people stand and pour boiling water down on the invaders below and stand behind the crenellations and shoot arrows. So I got to do all that. One right. nice trick is to cut a narrow slit and then to take that slit and fold it down so that you create the crenellations. So now let's review. We have the crenellations, we have the very high up small windows, we have an angle to our tower so that it's hard for invaders to get in. So we're doing all these things to make a keep for our castle. This would be probably in the inner curtain inside here where the royal family might stay to be farthest away from the invaders who are coming from the outside. If there's a door in our castle, it might be here. It might have a drawbridge. There might be a bridge here um, to really protect it. Um, we need to draw bricks on here. So I'm going to use a black marker just because it's easier for you to see the black marker, whereas um, on the video it might be harder for you to see pencil. Draw these lines across first. Okay, this is very important. Don't make the vertical lines because if you make a line going all the way up, it's not really going to look like bricks or stonework. What you need to do is you need to make a line along the bottom, the lines along the bottom. The next row, it does not continue up from here. It goes in between here and goes up. Otherwise, it won't really look like bricks or stonework because if you piled all the stones directly on top of each other and didn't stagger them they would be very weak indeed they would fall apart so that's how you would draw the bricks and then on the inside and it's a little difficult for me because I'm holding a camera with one hand but you want to um, change the shape a little bit of it to create a um, more of a stone like look as opposed to a um, a brick-like look because these castles are usually made of stone. However, once I color in the stonework, it gives it a much nicer feel and actually the sloppiness can work to my advantage because it has a rather organic um, look the way real stone wouldn't be exactly even. You can see the difference. This is where I have not put the stonework in and this is where I have. So you can see it looks a little better. Um, noted this project, this castle project is far from done. As you can see, there are many more different parts to the castle. However, this is how you would get started on the keep of your castle and be able to build a sturdy three-dimensional form that demonstrates that you understand how castles were used in the Middle Ages as fortresses to protect people who lived within.